Dear viewer, we will come again to our program for the 40 days of prayer. This is Pastor Peter Nyaga right here from Nairobi Central SDA Church. I would invite you to come along today that you may be blessed together with us. Now, if you're joining for the first time, this is a season of 40 days of prayer. We began from that of May. We're going all through to 11th of June. Why are we praying? We are praying because, number one, the church is in the season of uh, elections. And we are calling upon the Lord to give the church, global church, leadership that are going to be mission-oriented and, and move the church to the next level in terms of our purposes or in the mission context. And number two, we are also praying for especially the countries of Ukraine and Russia because of the war that is taking place there, that peace of God may prevail and people of God may have a good time to settle down and worship one more time. But also we have individual challenges. We are praying for revival and reformation, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we are asking the Lord to come through in the situations of our life in various ways. And so this is a time that God has prepared for you and for me that we may be blessed of him. Now today uh, is day seven in our uh, series of our presentations. And we are looking at a very special uh, uh, you know, uh, topic this mo moment. Uh, that says you are the light you are the light and we, it's based on the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 14 down to 16 and I'll read before we start you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and if and it giveth light and to all that are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Very important text here. Before we expand on it, let's have a round of prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of this moment with you. We invite you, Lord, to speak to us and speak through me. This text, Lord, in the next few minutes, may you make it sensible to us in a way that it can revive our spirits and revive our hearts and quicken our preparedness for the soon coming. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are the light. You are the light. Light is very important. In fact, where I'm studying, I am in the presence of light, you know. Uh, because without this light, maybe you may not be able to see me well. The, the camera requires light for me, you know, to be uh, very, you know, be able to be seen well. And even for the uh, better, you know, uh, images coming through. Um, but so light is very, very important. We, we, we all know that we cannot be able to do much without light. Imagine a world where there's no light. I'm sure wherever you are, in one way or another, there's some form of light. If you're getting this message, there's some form of light wherever you are. Because without light, many things may not be done. We wake in the morning and we're expecting to see the light of the sun. It comes in the night, we have electricity and other form of light that we need to have that we can be able to be, you know, a productive and do a few things in the night. Of course, we know we switch off light to go to sleep, to rest, because... Light keeps us active. Light keeps us active. And so the Bible, Jesus comes and says, you are the light. Now, taking you back to the story of creation, when God came to create, the Bible text in the book of Genesis, create a picture where the world was full of darkness. Then God came in and the first thing God did was to speak light. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, God spoke light for light to be that it can begin is creation. So light was very important right from the onset that God may be able to be in light as is created. Of course, we know that God is not a human being, he was not dependent on the light, but there's a principle that light is important in our activities is important in our progress. It is important in our lives. Now, when Christ comes then uh, in the book of Matthew, the Beatitudes, 
that series of Beatitudes ends and then, of course, it, it cannot end. Of course, we know, um, we, we know Beatitudes as blessed and blessed and blessed, but it's in that context. He says, ye are the light of the world. And so, Jesus recognizes that you are very important that the world needs you to operate. The world needs you to operate. The world needs your presence for it to be active. The world needs you for it to be productive. He says, you are the light. You see, when we talk about spiritual light, we are talking about the ability for you to impact the world with the true knowledge, opening their eyes with the true knowledge, true understanding of the will of God, the purposes that God has for, this, for us in this life. You see, a people who live without the true knowledge of God are like a people living in darkness. You see, before Christ came, when we fell into sin, we were in darkness. So Christ comes to bring light. In fact, he is the light. And we reflect his light. So when, when we reflect his light, then we become light. You now the people who see us and they see our humility, our meekness, our moral standing, they, they appreciate who we are, they admire who we are, but what they don't understand perhaps is, be, is that we are who we are because of the one who has covered us, that is Christ, the son of righteousness. So Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And, and, and the challenge here, is that we need to pray that this light that we are may be visible, may illuminate the world. We may be causing a positive influence in people's lives. You know, Jesus here is asking, uh, would it be appropriate for you to light your lamp and then put it under the bush? He says, no, it, it will be of no use. In other words, what spiritual gifts do you have? What knowledge of God do you have? Don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. It is like keeping the lamp under the bushel. Lift it up for people to see. Tell people of the goodness of Jesus. Tell people of the grace of God. Tell people of the love of God. Tell people of how important it is to be connected with God. In other words, be a disciple maker. To be the light of the world, it become a disciple maker. Move out of your comfort zone. Go and light up some corners of the world which are full of darkness. People who have not come into the light of the knowledge of God, it takes you to go there to light up the world. You are the light of the world. Allow me to read one quote here uh, from... Um, a very, uh, you know, from the book, I mean, from the book of Thoughts from the Mount, you know, Blessings, page number 40, uh, the author is my best, you know, my favorite author, Ellen G. White. This woman has written deep messages uh, filled with the Spirit of God. And I, I, I love quoting from her. Uh, and so if you are interacting with uh, quotes or writings for the first time, it's a, one of her books called The Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, page number 40. Now, she writes and says this, Humanity has in itself no light. Apart from Christ, we are like unkindled taper. But when we turn to one, the son of righteousness, when we come in touch with the Christ, the old soul is aglow with the brightness of the divine presence. Christ's followers are to be more than a light in the midst of men. They are the light of the world. Angels of glory wait to communicate through you heaven's light and power to souls that are ready to perish. Look at this. That we are not, we are not in the light, but we are the light. You see where I am, I'm in the light. 
Uh, there are lights that, 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 that you know, they are making sure that this, this, this image comes out well. But the Bible says we are not in the light, the way I am in the light here, but we are the light. And number two, very important here, that the heavens, the angels of heaven, are waiting to communicate through you the heaven's light and power. Heaven has given two things very important. Light and power. The heavens shapes and transforms the world through two things. Light and power. And then the quote here says, the angels are waiting to communicate this light of God and the power of God upon our lives through you. When you discover your identity that you are the light of the world. So as we pray today, uh, we are seeking the Lord to allow us to come into the understanding, fully understanding of what it means for you to be the light of the world. Do people around you feel peace with you? Do people around you feel comfortable with you? Do, do, do people around you feel at peace around you? What does people at your home say about you? You see, to be the light of the world, it be a peacemaker, it be a person, an influential person spiritually. And the angels are waiting that you may be such a person that they can use to communicate the love of God, to communicate the knowledge of God, to communicate the light of God, to communicate the power of God to a decaying and perishing world. And so we need to pray today that a God may help us to not just be in the light, but be the light. And people around us can be illuminated by the light that we Give as we prepare many for eternity. We have few prayer concerns today. Number one, have you realized that angels are waiting to work through you to reach out to other people? Pray for that. It's a prayer request. That truly God may guide you to, to understand fully how angels are waiting for you. It's very amazing that angels are waiting for you. That they may use, they may reach out to the world through you. Number two. Think about your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. Has God shown you or directed you to them? Or have you discovered or realized that actually God is waiting for you to reach out to them with the light of God? There's a prayer request. God, help me to be the light in my family. Help me to be the light to my friends. Help me to be the light to my neighbors and my co-workers. We're also going to pray for the seven names that we have already chosen, we are praying through. And if you're joining us for the first time, just choose seven names that you pray for. Pray for God to help you to see the needs of the people you are praying for and for wisdom in how to help them. And so come along with me today as we pray. We're also praying for Adventist institutions, wherever, the different part of the world, the medical institutions, and various other institutions that we may, they may be, you know, uh, blessed of the Lord as they prepare many uh, in this ministry. So come together with me today as we seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much. How wonderful it is to know that we are not just in the light, but we are the light. Lord, we pray because you have asked us to allow this light to so shine that people may see it and glorify your name. Help us, Lord, today that we may truly become this light, that we may understand that we are this light, and that we may seek to shine 
to everyone around us, right from home, at our workplaces, our neighbors, and all that come into contact with us, that we can be their light, and they can look at us and see and rejoice. Lord, help us today, we pray. We also remember the various institutions in the Adventist Church, that they truly can also become light, as many young people go into these institutions to interact with the professors. They may interact with the only true professor, Jesus Christ. They may receive of his light. They may become light, and they may become disciple makers. Pray, Lord, even for the seven people that you have chosen these 40 days of prayer, that you can reach out to them. Lord, remind us and help us to know that we are the light to these people. As we continue in the seven days of prayer, Lord, we pray that you may revive us and reform us and order us in the patterns of heaven that we will glorify your name. And the church in this part of the world and elsewhere may truly be the light of this world and many will be attracted to come to you. Bless us today, Lord, and walk with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you for following through these messages. And thank you for those who are talking to me and telling me how you are getting blessed and the many people also you are encouraging. May we be a team as we journey along these 40 days of prayer. Till we meet tomorrow, God be with you.